Const correctness is a paradigm of how and when to use const with our objects and functions correctly to simplify the process of writing and reading the code while using the compiler to protect us from changing data that should stay constant. We can even illustrate its usefulness in a somewhat dorky but still real-life example. So, imagine a friend wants to borrow your phone. Hey dude, how's it going? Oh hey, how's it going? Listen, can I borrow your phone for a sec? Sure. Why? I know nothing much, I just need to check the weather for interlocking for tonight. Oh, okay. There you go. Thanks, man. A few moments later... And that's it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, of course, don't mention it. Wait. What the... What the f... Hey, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. That escalated quickly. What went wrong here? Well, we gave out too much access to an object that was important to us, a phone. What can we do to avoid this situation? Well, if we followed the const correctness paradigm, we could have easily avoided this. In this particular situation, we could have provided a view over our phone instead of handing out the phone itself. Let's see how it would play out. I just need to check the weather for interlocking for tonight. Yeah, of course. There you go. See how by providing only a view of our phone, we have eliminated the possibility of changing our phone object. And you've guessed it, providing a view is just a fancy way of saying that we give out a const reference instead of an object itself. Now, let's dig into how this and other similar situations would be represented in code and what exactly is this const correctness. So let's say our friend wants to borrow our phone. How would we represent this in C++? I'd argue that both we and our friend would be objects of some classes, say, good person and a meh person. A good person would own a phone. Um, that means that the phone object would be part of the data owned by the good person. And being a good person open to the world, we will start by modeling a good person as a struct. The meh person would have a function do stuff that takes a reference to a phone. We can then model the situation of passing over the phone by creating an object of each of these classes and passing the phone object from one to another to do stuff with it. And if you followed me talking about functions before, then you will instantly see an issue with the do stuff function. It takes a non-const phone object reference, which allows the mapperson class to modify the phone object in any way it wants. Even worse, the implementation of mapperson can be hidden away into a pre-compiled library from us, so we can't know for sure what is happening there. Which leads us to rule number one of const correctness. Always pass big objects you don't intend to change by a const reference to any function. Pass small objects by copy. This is nothing new to us, as we have talked about it before when we talked about functions. However, it does not help us much here, does it? The function do stuff does not belong to us. For all we know, it belongs to some other library. One way to enforce const correctness here would be to not have a mutable phone object in the first place. And a way to achieve this would be to become an extremely stable person and create the object that represents us in the previous example as a const object in the first place. Which leads us to rule number two of const correctness. Make every object const unless it explicitly needs to be changed. If you can design an object that does not need to change throughout its lifetime, do so. The bad news here is that it is hard to achieve at all times. Think about it. While I believe that I am a very stable person, in no way I could model myself as a const object. Not even talking about physiological or moral things, what if I just want to buy a new phone and replace my instance with this new one? So the good person object cannot be const here, and such cases are quite common. So how else can we make sure that the do stuff function must take a constant phone reference? We do have another trick up our sleeves. It's time for the good person struct to close up a little and become a class. This allows us a lot more control over how the others get access to our data. In our case, we would make good person a class that takes a reference to a temporary phone, an rref, in its constructor. We would then move the underlying phone object into its private data and hold it there. We also have to think of uh, how to expose this internal phone object to the world, so we implement a getter function. This function would return a const reference to our internal phone object. Furthermore, this function is not supposed to change uh, the underlying object in any way, and we have a mechanism to indicate this to the compiler. We mark the whole function const2, which allows us to formulate rules 3 and 4 of const correctness. So rule 3, 
prefer returning a const reference to the private data of complex types of any object if you need to expose them to the user of your class. Return a copy for simple times instead. Only return a non-const reference if your class implements a data agnostic container or something like a std vector. And rule number four, mark every class method as const unless it is explicitly supposed to change the underlying object. Prefer const methods when designing a class. It is important to note here that uh, if a class method is not marked as const, the compiler assumes that this method can change the underlying object. I want to note that in my experience, the const class functions are the reasons most of the beginners struggle with const correctness in C++. And let's illustrate why. So you have a class foo with a function bar that is a getter and does not change the content of the foo object. Now the foo object is passed by const reference to some function called whatever that calls bar on it. What will happen if you try to compile this code? The compiler will complain. And at this point, a lot of beginners will become frustrated. They know that they don't change the foo object. They pass a const reference to it and seem to be doing everything right. But the compiler sees that the foo bar method is not marked as const and assumes the worst. So it will complain uh, that calling a non-const method on a const reference to an object might change the underlying object, which is forbidden. I've seen many frustrated students struggle with this concept, but I, for one, like how it's implemented. Anyway, if you follow rules 3 and 4 that we've just introduced, you should be fine. Finally, there is just one more place where const can be used uh, that I want to mention here. We can actually have const data within the class. So coming back to our example, we could make the phone object constant within our good person structure. However, this is nearly never a good idea. If you do know of a good use case, please write it in the comments, because I don't know of one. Essentially, by having const data, any object of such a class is doomed to live and die within a single scope. This is rarely useful, with one significant outlier, the view paradigm. As one typical example, consider this. Say a certain class has its interface, but we would want it to have a different interface when we work with it. One way to achieve this is to introduce a thin wrapper around the class in question and that holds a const reference to the object of interest and introduces new interface to work with this object. So let's say our friend and us from the previous example figure that the map person class does not need the whole phone object. They just need the weather. So they change the do stuff function to take a const reference to the weather object instead, which uh, the phone object readily provides. However, the weather object only has a function to get a forecast by a GNSS coordinate. This is convenient for a very precise forecast, but our friend wants to know the weather in Interlaken, remember? So they wrap the constant weather reference into a view object. Such a city weather view is not copyable or movable and exists for the sole purpose of simplifying the interface to the weather object. This class is then typically used locally within some scope, say the do stuff method of the my person class. And while you might argue that in this example we don't really need the view class, as we could have just called the get GNSS coordinates for city function directly from the do stuff function, imagine what would happen if this would happen in many parts of the code base. And what if the view helper function was longer than a couple of lines? These lines of code would then get copied in all the places that they would be needed, requiring us to repeat ourselves all the time, making changes that will inevitably come next much harder. Anyway, this leads us to our last rule of const correctness, the rule number five. Never make class data const unless it is a const reference to our object when you're implementing a view over that object. There is a slight caveat to that. We can and should mark the class static data const, but we'll talk about it some other time. Okay, and we're done now. If you follow these five rules, you should have no problem with const in C++. Not only that, you will actually employ the compiler as your friend who is able to look over your shoulder and find the mistakes in your logic. In the end, if you're trying to call a function not marked as const on a const object, you probably didn't really mean it. If the compiler does not catch this, you will have to spend time searching for the logic bug, which in my experience is much harder and much more painful. With time, using these rules will become second nature and will help you writing high quality code that ends up saving you and the others time and nerves. And with this, I wish you a great day and see you in the next videos. And if you, by chance, need a refresher on move semantics, just click on the video over here.
Okay, that's it. Bye.